great leaders end up as tent workers because they cannot pay the price of what makes a leader wisdom is not a cheap commodity it's the costliest commodity but of greatest value the costliest commodity and of greatest value let me share with you the story of two great people that have inspired me a lot the one of them is benjamin franklin benjamin franklin had only two year formal education how many years two years only two year formal education and this young man was an apprentice in a princeton shop and so in those days they used to give them money for food this is your lunch money go and eat he would save the money for lunch today lunch tomorrow until it's enough to buy a book he has saying so he will go fasting for knowledge fasting for what so he was doing without lunch to buy books is that you and suddenly the lion in him began to rise today benjamin franklin is a great name in american history benjamin franklin founded the university of pennsylvania which is t rated number 15th university in the world as a 2008 written it was founded 1786 benjamin franklin developed himself to become a scientist he founded the thunder arrest of science engineering he invented it thunder was killing people for free he sat down and found a way of tapping that energy and earthing it two years from education you know how many years you have gone to school in your life benjamin franklin founded a daily newspaper a tabloid benjamin franklin became one of the foremost american diplomats he single-handedly negotiated the french government support for the revolution i hope i'm speaking well in london that was what empowered the american forces to win today there's a benjamin franklin day in america and only 365 or 366 days in a year they gave a day to one man who died about 300 years ago that is the treasure of wisdom it is not common sense it's a costly sense come and say costly wisdom is not common sense it's costly sense very costly sense benjamin franklin read his way into greatness he read his way into leadership he wasn't waiting and wishing for it he was working at it how can someone with a two-year form education found a university that is still relevant today from 19, I mean, 1786 the lazy generation we just lay by and waiting for things to happen we are killed by pleasure think of michael faraday how many have heard about michael faraday I mean, now i'm talking about these folks because they are believers but they did not abuse the faith most of us are abusing the faith i said god come and cook for me thank you jesus cook for me now god drive me to work i don't feel like driving today That's faith abuse. Michael Faraday was a lab. Now, let me tell you the story. He also had a two year formal education. I noted some of these things in my book, Winning Wisdom. Now, you see, Michael Faraday was also a printing apprentice. It was a booming business in their days. So, people learned how to be a printer. So, he was there. But every time scientists exhibited, their experiment in those days they were going about not watching film and videos eh? and movies like today it was a knowledge error come and say knowledge error scientists will come in and exhibit the experiment people pay to enter to watch michael faraday was praying to enter small boy what will you do with science now there was this great physicist in his time they call him Humphrey Davis Humphrey Davis was a professor and then Michael Faraday went to one of those exhibitions and took notes now for him to take notes with only two years of education he must have equipped himself 
to even understand the professor he must have equipped himself i mean understand what i'm saying now uh, michael faraday binded the notes and sent it to this professor just to satisfy his printing and then uh, all that how much he enjoyed the lecture so one time a time came when the lab attendant of this professor left and this man needed a lab attendant then he remember a boy gave him a binded note of his lecture one time he said this boy may be interested in being a lab attendant so he rode on his horse back to trace the address and he found michael faraday would you mind being my lab attendant oh with all pleasure so michael faraday was a lab attendant who grew to become a world-class physicist now listen to me in his lifetime Humphrey david began to be envious of the intellectual capacity of michael faraday in part his biographer said he was reasoning more logically than humphrey davis well to cut the long story short you know the story if you're in the sciences how great a name michael faraday made for himself in the field of science michael faraday was not only a believer he was also a preacher but sold out to an undying quest for knowledge and so and this place in history and knowledge is the principal material for the making of wisdom so <laughs> leaders are made of applied knowledge knowledge is doing what you have discovered to be right doing what you have discovered to be right if anything can come out of michael faraday there is something inside you if anything can come out of benjamin franklin there is something inside you it's just to reorder your priorities you see students don't fail in school just because they are not intelligent most of the time they fail because they have wrong priorities when it should be in the class it's in town when it should be in the library it's in a party so they dub him unintelligent not because he has no sound intellect but he has a wrong priority which has eroded his capacity to learn so when you misplace your priority in your quest for leadership you fail to become one my library has remained my most valuable asset on this earth to me today i have been building that since 1974 i was 20 years old when i started building my little little i didn't know it was library i just think it was the love for reading using money to buy things that when you see the price on them today you wonder whether they stole it because of how little they were selling for that time it's so important for you not to buy books for decoration you know encyclopedia britannica and then you sit and then take a biro then they take your picture and yet there is nothing if you truly have a quest for spiritual growth then go for spiritual resources you have a quest for breakthroughs in business go for material that will help you actualize it if you are not a committed re reader you never imagine a leader you never you never imagine a leader i've told people time and again i'm not surprised about where we are today i would have been surprised if you are not there because the price you can't be surprised if you go to a car garage to buy a car and you have the money can you be surprised that they sold to you presently building a second university called landmark university with agriculture as its main anchor and for that reason i had to send a team plus myself to israel to go and check on 19 agricultural and research settlement in israel to buy into their knowledge with all the available documents and resource materials in building what is going to start next year october and then negotiating for consultancy with some of those research centers so we can have inputs from somewhere in building what we are there. anything you do with only common sense will end in a common place I told them a Covenant University, I said in 10 years of its existence, it will emerge a world acclaimed university. It's happening. 10 years. They're only seven years now. 
Nobody's talking. Why? Because the requirements have been met, the results must follow. Gold, silver, diamond, rubies will never be a substitute for wisdom. And it's acquired with the price of high level self discipline. How do you get time to read? How many want to ask that question here? Okay, good. Now, my answer is how do you get time to eat? Because what eating is to you is what reading is to me. There's a bag that travels with me everywhere I go. It's a bag of books, the books of the hour. I read daily and I write daily. And I'm not writing for purpose of publishing books. I'm writing to draw lessons from what I read. Everything that works, works by knowledge. You know why you have a lot of divorces? People are so ignorant about marriage. There are many married people here who have never read any book in their life of marriage. I've never read one. Neither have they sat in any marriage seminar in their life. So husband and wife, they next something. Goodbye, goodbye. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. They don't know nothing about it. Before we got married, I read eight books of marriage. How many? Man, I was balanced. Been in it now for how many years? I don't have any experience of what you do when they fight. We don't fight. I was smarter than that before I was married. There are people who are going to have children. They have never read anything on pregnancy or how to give birth. So the slightest sign, God, oh. <laughs> there are people who have never read anything on child raising. They are just producing children. They are just producing.